Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing tutorials. And today I want to talk a little bit about an episode we released a few weeks ago. Uh, we spent a day out on the water with Mad River Outfitters and Ohio Fly Fishing Guides, Ryan Ratliff. You've all seen Ryan, fantastic fly tire, fantastic guide. Uh, you see him here in the shop on a daily basis. Great guy to spend a day on the water with. And Ryan and I both love catching panfish. Um, it's just really one of my passions. I, I, I'd love to do it as much as I can. And uh, Ryan is an excellent, excellent panfish guide. So we were really lucky to get a day on the water with him. Since we work together, we don't get to fish all that much together. But it was a really great day. And a lot of folks that saw that episode, uh, thanks for watching. It was a very popular episode. But they chimed in and said they'd like to hear a little bit more about the equipment that we were using. We touched on it a little bit in the video, but we thought we'd just give you kind of a rundown of the stuff that I was using that day. And first and foremost, I love catching panfish on fiberglass fly rods. I don't use fiberglass all that much, uh, but I do love to fish with it when I can. And uh, I, I do enjoy trout fishing uh, with a fiberglass rod when appropriate, but uh, I find myself gravitating to, to fiberglass almost always when I'm pan fishing. It's just such a hoot, such a delicate presentation. Uh, such a, a parabolic full flex action on these that just makes a, a bluegill or a panfish feel like a, uh, you're fighting a permit for that matter. The rod I've been using most recently is the current Orvis Superfine Glass. I, I think these are very, very well done rods. Orvis has done a great job. They kind of tweaked the actions on the latest versions. They're not quite as slow as some of the others. Of course, you have plenty of great fiberglass rods out there. There's the Echo uh, River Glass, you've got the Reddington Butter Sticks. Probably the best fiberglass rod ever made is the uh, Scott F Series. But anyways, the Orvis are, are not cheap, but they're not outrageously expensive either. And, and I really enjoy fishing with this rod. Uh, kudos to Orvis, they, they did a great job on the current Orvis Superfine fiberglass. It's a seven and a half foot four weight. Uh, you know, you could easily go down to a three weight in fact, you can pan fish, of course, with a, anywhere from a two weight up to say a five weight. And of course, you can do that with a graphite rod. You can do that with any rod, whatever rod you have, you can go pan fishing. Uh, but I think you'll find if you really get into it, uh, going lighter and going shorter just makes it that much more challenging and to me, that much more fun. So fishing a fiberglass rod. And of course, I paired that with an old school click and Paul reel. And I say old school, this is a current reel for Orvis in their bat and kill, their standard bat and kill click and Paul reel. You've seen click and Paul before. There is essentially no drag system. It, it's really no different outgoing than incoming. And it doesn't even have a drag adjustment knob. So there essentially is no drag other than the click. So it's really mono y mono. I mean, if, if uh, of course, a panfish isn't going to run all that far. So if you do need to apply additional drag pressure, you can do that by palming the reel. But just a simple, old school, uh, well-made machine, click and paw reel. You know, it used to be that there was tons and tons of these out there on the market. There's not that many. I mean, you've got the Orvis Bat and Kill. I think Galvin makes a nice one. Abel, of course, makes a nice one. Um, but this reel is not outrageously expensive. It is machined and it is a really, I mean, shall I say, like butter. Really s smooth little reel. But I like putting a click and paw reel on a fiberglass rod. It just makes for a really retro, kind of old school outfit to me. And of course the fly line. I don't want anything aggressive. With a fiberglass rod and throwing smaller panfish bugs, you do not want anything overly aggressive. Um, I think I've got a scientific anglers tr trout on here. Uh, they make that in a variety of different sizes. You could use a, a scientific anglers frequency trout, not outrageously expensive. A Cortland 444, 
one of my favorite fly lines, of course. So I would say just nothing overly aggressive if you are gonna fish a fiberglass rod. Fishing for bluegill, you don't need a technical fly line. Just a good old fashioned weight forward line. Then my leader, bluegill fishing, pan fishing is contact fly fishing. You want that loop that you form with the tip of the rod to go all the way down the leader to the fly, the rod's gonna come down and you're gonna impart action. You have contact with the fly. So <clears throat> our simple three part contact formula, okay? Of course, you want the butt of the leader to, to match in stiffness. Again, it's stiffness and mass, it's not diameter. It matches in stiffness to the tip of the line. So on a four weight, I'm using uh, 15 thousandths, 0.015, Maxima clear is what matches up with my particular four weight. And then you make your butt section as long as you want. I usually go about a four foot butt section. And then uh, this is the basic contact formula we've shown you before that was kind of developed by a friend flip pallet. You're gonna do an 18 inch transition piece and then an 18 inch tippet. Uh, super simple. The butt section is dictated by the fly line the tippet is dictated by the fly. I most often use, say, 1X or 2X tippet. So my, my 18 inch transition piece is probably gonna be somewhere around 13 thousandths or 12 thousandths. Not overly technical. So a four foot butt section, 18 inch transition, 18 inches of tippet, and there's your contact leader. That same leader works for bass. Butt matches the fly line, tippet matches the fly that 18 inch transition piece splits the difference. And that's really it. I mean, other than my flies, which I, I did want to give you a, a quick tour of some of my, uh, some of my panfish flies, some of my favorites. And I carry two boxes with me when I'm, uh, when I'm bluegill fishing. And <clears throat> a lot of times I'm in a boat, which we were on this particular day that we were fishing. So I can carry these, these two boxes with me. I've got a surface version, and a, or excuse me, surface version and a subsurface version. Okay, so all my surface bugs obviously are in here, subsurface in here. And these are really, th these are really cool boxes. I love these things. These are uh, uh, marketed under the Mad River Outfitters brand. I think they're called the 16 compartment adjustable boxes. They have these adjustable compartments so you can kind of configure these however you want. But for my bluegill flies, I just leave all 16 compartments intact and uh, these, these things are just great. In fact, they open from either side. You can take the lid off if you ever need to. And they're, they're super cheap. Um, and, and they just hold a lot of flies. And especially, like I said, for, for boat fishing, these are absolutely perfect. If I'm on foot or waiting or something, I may take the flies out of here and put it into a smaller box that I'll carry with me that fits into my my vest or my sling pack. Uh, a lot of times I wear a sling pack if I'm on foot and bluegill fishing. But let's have a quick look. Of course, catching panfish on the surface, tons of fun and our favorites. Of course, our go-to for general pan fishing is this little bluegill bug. Uh, of course, everything here you can find at madriveroutfitters.com unless I tied it, uh, which I'll, I'll let you know there. But these little panfish bugs, of course, Ain't no use if it ain't chartreuse. That would be my first choice. That comes in a frog. Also black, which is helpful. Um, little beetles, little bluegill spiders. This is one of Dave Whitlock's uh, hot spot beetles. And it's just basically a, a fancy rubber spider. Uh, you've got this big eye panfish bug. Again, a rubber spider. I've got some foam beetles. I've got a few grasshopper type flies in here. Here's kind of a small little chubby, uh, bluegill sized chubby that basically represents a beetle. And then from there, I've got essentially poppers. I mean, you've got these smaller sized double barrel poppers come in a variety of different colors. I like to carry the chartreuse, of course, orange, blue, and black. Um, the boogle bugs, hard to beat a boogle bug and they do make these in the smaller sizes will work. These will usually work for the larger panfish. If I'm trying to not catch the smaller stuff, uh, I'll fish these larger boogles or the double barrels. Kind of a, a sneaky peat. This is a, a panfish slider, 
and this one is going to dive as opposed to pop so it's going to dive and pop back up I carry those on the chartreuse in white I believe they make them in black also and then this is a fly called a booby and you probably see why they call it a booby uh, but this this is a great surface bug I, I can fish this subsurface too on a sink tip if you want and it really uh, you know it uh, floats up when the sink tip is pulling it down so <clears throat> you know just a variety of and the good news is panfish aren't very picky uh, you know a lot of times if they're not liking the chartreuse which is rare I'll switch to the black and all of a sudden start catching fish so it's good to have a variety and it's good to have a variety of sizes depending on what you're looking to do over the course of that given day um, often overlooked is subsurface fishing for panfish and, and I find myself fishing subsurface a lot tight lining for them and just slowly stripping a fly and you got a feel for the strike you can also fish flies below an indicator below a strike indicator uh, and where you'd be literally using it like a bobber to suspend a fly at a certain depth and then of course you can also fish two flies you can hang one of these subsurface flies below one of those poppers and that's an excellent in fact we were doing quite a bit of that uh, the day that Ryan wore out a few weeks ago things that you can buy just a good old size 10 woolly bugger this is a crystal bugger and chartreuse uh, this is a fly called a jig bugger and these things um, sink like a rock they ride hook up they have a tungsten bead on them and that's a, a little bit smaller than your average woolly bugger but called a jig bugger I carry them in black there's an olive version and kind of a tan version. Uh, I don't remember what this fly is called, but it is it's essentially sold as a carp fly, but it works great as a, as a basic panfish fly too. And it's, it's very similar to that jig bugger, um, you know, basically like a woolly bugger with some rubber legs on it. A uh, couple of colors on that guy. This is a fly that we catch a ton of panfish on called the crappie special and not only does it work well for panfish but it also works for crappie this has been in the matter of outfitters staple lineup for years and years um, not going anywhere it comes in yellow chartreuse and white it's got some bead chain eyes on it it sinks a little more slowly than some of the others this is a little uh, bluegill killer bug that i tie it's kind of my own invention just chartreuse red and white and some triggering colors uh, just a buggy looking bluegill fly that I tie up. Here's another fly that I tie. Super simple chenille. I've got it weighted so it sinks pretty good and then some rubber legs on it. These things take me 12 seconds to tie. Uh, I tie them in yellow and I tie them in black and then I, I fish a lot of woolly worms and this is a jig version of the woolly worm that I tie and I use this um, kind of speckled a uh, variegated chenille and it gives it a really buggy look of course that little red tag tail that all woolly worms have and then you've got the jig hook and the jig bead on there so this is going to ride hook up and this gives a great jigging action which bluegill really really look for and I can fish this fly alone under an indicator or I can fish it below a popper and I, f I tie those in just a variety of colors I also tie some some pheasant tail jigs just hot spot pheasant tail jigs in about a size 10 or a 12 I put an orange collar or a chartreuse collar behind just the same thing I'd fish for trout here in the mad Dave Whitlock's rubber leg squirrel nymph great panfish fly never leave home without it Dave Whitlock's damsel nymph also lots of damsels and dragons in the ponds around here and probably where you live as well so Dave Whitlock's damsel nymph great bluegill bug and last but not least a fly another fly that I tie it's just a little it looks like a wax worm you know a lot of folks catch a lot of bluegill and panfish on wax worms this is kind of my my answer to that and this is a very similar version to a fly that I've shown you before called the BC crane fly larva I just basically took the same formula with Blaine chocolate silly skin um, and maybe we'll tie this for you in an episode coming up but that's just you know I don't even know what I call it um, just a little stubby tail and the wax worm looking body and tied on a jig hook again because I like to hang these below an indicator or an, uh, a popper or what have you there you go just a quick tour of my subsurface box 
about half of them I tie, about half of them I buy here at Mad River Outfitters. But you can easily go to madriveroutfitters.com. There's a full category of all of our panfish flies where you'll see most of the ones I just showed you. And then uh, stay tuned because uh, there's a couple of cool flies in here that I think we'll show you how to tie in upcoming episodes. So sorry to be so long-winded there, but uh, there's, it was a shocking amount of interest in catching panfish on the fly rod in my estimation, hardly anything is as much fun as catching bluegill on a fly rod, especially with an old retro fiberglass and click and paw. There you have it, friends. As always, if you have any questions about this video or any others that we make, please send us an email at the shop or pick up the phone and give us a call. We can't really get to the comments uh, down below. Uh, unfortunately, we have to work here at Mad River Outfitters so we can afford to keep making these videos. So. Any questions, send us an email, pick up the phone and give us a call. And as always, stay tuned, subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss an episode. For example, this one right here, that one's pretty good. And this one's not bad either. So thanks as always for being here.